Hi, this is Doug Manch, and you're listening to Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Yes, welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 155. You are with your high priest, Conchu Ray. And uh, we, I have a very special guest tonight to be covering something very special as well. A, very, a current issue of a Moon Knight appearance in the Marvel Universe. Joining me tonight is none other than one of the co-hosts on the Phantom Zone podcast, Jared. Jared, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I love being described as very special. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, um, you certainly are, because I'm very excited to go through this issue. Loonies, we are going through Avengers. I'm going to get really geeky. Volume 8, issue 34, part 2 of The Age of Conchu. I believe this was also subtitled The Fist of Vengeance. Uh, so we'll be covering that tonight. Regardless of the um, the moon, uh, generally, listeners, you know, we, we are dictated by the phases of the moon. Uh, with new comic books, that's all null and void. So Jared and I are just going to get straight into last week's uh, release of this, this issue. Uh, before we kick off any of that as well, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsors. First and foremost, the Petrunis. Thank you so much, uh, each and every one of you, for supporting us. You two can consider uh, supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash itkmoonnight. Just throw in a bit of coin our way, uh, and then we can kind of branch out, do bigger and better things. We can wield Mjolnir. We can, you know, absorb all the other powers, which will be very exciting. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, as well, a couple of other sponsors, our two sponsors, Hello Headphones, uh, empowering gamers to do their best, play their best, and also Dreamland Comics from Illinois, the superhero superstore. So... Anyway, Jared, I'm very happy to have you on. Now, before we get into anything as well, people may be or may not be familiar with your show. Uh, I guess just in a, how would you how would you pitch it? Uh, what do you guys do, and like who's who's on the show, and what kind of things do you cover? Sure. So it's uh, like I said, you mentioned it's called the Phantom Zone. It's me and my two uh, friends and podcast soulmates, uh, Noah and Kayla, and. Um, it's you know in a lot of ways, so it's a comic book podcast I should say but mm-hmm. but uh, it, it, in a lot of ways it's the opposite of what you do and that's why I'm glad to be on the show it's it's a real learning experience because we do a very like satellite overview of comics it's mm-hmm. a very sort of 101 take on things and we kind of see ourselves as the intersection of sort of like old comic fans obsession and sort of new readers excitement that's kind of how we look at it mm-hmm. um and you know we'll do different sort of spotlights we have a kind of conceptual angle to it so we'll do most of our episodes not exclusively we do deep dives on characters but a lot of our episodes are sort of about like let's say um like magic in comics or or maybe like we did an episode uh, police in comics or something like that mm-hmm. and and we'll do these spotlights that will have a character and i I think, well, how am I going to talk about one character for 15 whole minutes? <laughs> and then I look at your podcast, and it's one character, a character I love very much, but like for like 150 episodes, I'm like, wait, <laughs> truly impressed. Well, Jerry, um, do not underestimate the power of the Ray Ramble. I can ramble <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, but no, that's a great Yeah, I've been listening to you guys. Uh, it's, it's a whole heap of fun. Um, uh, we were just talking off air before about uh, the, the more recent one which is episode 73 the comic book mm. bffs and duos and i call it i called it out to you as well because when i was listening it's like yes i'm glad you pointed out it was the, the wonder man beast um i guess buddy 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 yeah. romance yeah uh, what yeah partnership yeah it's it's my it's definitely more of a recurring like buddy I don't know, bromance than anything, yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah, I mean, the two very underestimated characters, um, but, but very very fun to hear your guys' takes. Uh, other other things that, like, I'm just going through some of the things just totally off the top of my head, a few of the deep yeah, yeah. dives I've heard. Uh, uh, there was a, 
comic book dads. I remember you did as well. Um, yeah, for rather, Father's Day. Yeah, yeah, Father's Day. Rather scathing, uh, actually, of the dads in <laughs> comics, which is rightly so because they all are yeah. you know, a little bit of a little bit of pricks. Um, <laughs> but anyway, well, some of them can and, be, not all of them. And it's true that when you put on your critic hat. You're, you start to become a bit of an asshole. And I think <laughs> that's when we review later, that's what I'm going to sort of my preamble is like, I am not, I don't mean to sound like an asshole. And I oh. very much respect the comics that we're criti- criticizing. But yeah. yeah. Oh, look, I, I know you're, I know you're good for it. Um, and, and very much welcome all sorts of views as well. I mean, geez, we had, there was a little bit of a, a little bit of a, you know, uh, I wouldn't say salty. Uh, a bit of hot, hot debate in the in our Facebook group of the the oh, recent wow. release. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't of the re- release at all. Someone actually posted. Uh, I think they were a new member, so shout out to uh, to the new member uh, named Lose Me. I think it's Michael, and uh, he decided to bring back that discussion about. Uh, and actually, I'd like to get your take on it. Of um, oh sure. Of the Moon Knight TV series and it being potentially PG or R rated. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you, do you think that would hinder it at all? I do, but I don't think that that's kryptonite to the show potentially being good. I, I think it would be a misstep artistically. Uh, and it's a weird thing because I don't think that, that sh- the show, the character's ever going to be a kind of like, um, like I think it's always going to have a niche quality, mm. you know, in a good way. It might rise to a certain level of popularity. Like a good example uh, is do you remember the Spawn animated um, series from HBO? Yeah, only a couple of them. They're very dark, wasn't it? V- very dark. And I'm not saying Moon Knight needs to be that dark, but mm. my point is that that show was critically very well received, but it was also this kind of cool thing that only the cool people knew about, you mm. know? Like, in other words, I don't think Moon Knight's ever going to be Spider-Man. I don't think he should be. Nah. So, I mean, my feeling is, like, I would prefer it be R-rated. Uh, mm-hmm. If they make it PG, I think the writing, the acting, all these sort of things can still save it. So there's no reason to panic or to like die on that hill. Yeah, I mean, again, not I'm not shooting down anyone's uh, anyone's opinions that were in the post and stuff. But just voicing my own as well. But uh, yeah, I I agree as well. I think um, I, I think it won't be the be all end all. You know, if it ends up being the PG whatever was it pg-13 rating um i think they can tell some really good stories as long as they do keep those threads of mood night uh you know true to the character uh mm-hmm. it's funny we'll get to some audio feedback uh later on in the show uh, one of our listeners phil he mentioned something a- about his conspiracies of of uh of you know the moon night tv show and such <laughs> uh but yeah as long as there are i guess the threads and for me it would be the the identities which is integral to mm-hmm. moon night as well as as well as the Egyptian like mythology and, and Conchu. Those two are the big things for me. I'd love to see them on, uh, translate over to TV. Um, yeah, I just wonder if they'll do both or they'll just pick one or the other. It's, it's, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, speaking of which, a nice little segue. Pat on the back for Ray. That was cool. Speaking of Moon Knight. Oh, hang on. This is a Moon Knight show, so <laughs> we're going to be talking about Moon Knight. Um, so you hmm. are a big Moon Knight fan as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, always interested to know uh, what kind of got you into Moon Knight and uh, and what are a few of the runs that really stick out for you? So, yeah, I'm a more recent Moon Knight fan, and I think that what it is is he's always been in my head a little bit uh, since I sort of saw the character. I think Moon Knight gets people that way. He's got a very striking aesthetic. It's sort of like Ghost Rider, and there's some other characters I could mention where, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think that he kind of got in people's head just based on, like, the image and the intrigue. There's a lot sort of mystery there. Um, There was a... Uh, there was a series that I only got a few issues of uh, in, I think, 2006 time. It was the Brian Fitch. Uh, I can't remember the writer on, on it. But, oh, Charlie Houston, um, 2006. Charlie Houston. Yeah. So fantastic stuff, but I didn't follow it, right? I only yeah. got – this was back when, like, you know, traits were less popular, so you would just mm-hmm. get issues every once in a while. And I just mm-hmm. re- remember thinking, oh, this is, you know, really good. Then I had some sense of it. Hi, this is Doug Manch, and you're listening to Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Yeah. 
Yes, welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 155. You are with your high priest, Conchu Ray. And uh, we, I have a very special guest tonight to be covering something very special as well. A, very, a current issue of a Moon Knight appearance in the Marvel Universe. Joining me tonight is none other than one of the co-hosts on the Phantom Zone podcast, Jared. Jared, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I love being described as very special. Nice. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. um, you certainly are, because I'm very excited to go through this issue. Loonies, we are going through Avengers. I'm going to get really geeky. Volume 8, issue 34, part 2 of The Age of Conchu. I believe this was also subtitled The Fist of Vengeance. Uh, so we'll be covering that tonight. Regardless of the um, the moon, uh, generally, listeners, you know, we, we are dictated by the phases of the moon. Uh, with new comic books, that's all null and void. So Jared and I are just going to get straight into last week's uh, release of this, this issue. Uh, before we kick off any of that as well, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsors. First and foremost, the Petrunis. Thank you so much, uh, each and every one of you, for supporting us. You two can consider uh, supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash itkmoonnight. Just throw in a bit of coin our way, uh, and then we can kind of branch out, do bigger and better things. We can wield Mjolnir. We can, you know, absorb all the other powers, which will be very exciting. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, as well, a couple of other sponsors, our two sponsors, Hello Headphones, uh, empowering gamers to do their best, play their best, and also Dreamland Comics from Illinois, the superhero superstore. So... Anyway, Jared, a very happy to have you on. Now, before we get into anything as well, people may be or may not be familiar with your show. Uh, I guess just in a, how would you how would you pitch it? Uh, what do you guys do, and like who's who's on the show, and what kind of things do you cover? Sure. So it's uh, like I said, you mentioned it's called the Phantom Zone. It's me and my two uh, friends and podcast soulmates, uh, Noah and Kayla, and. Um, it's you know in a lot of ways, so it's a comic book podcast I should say, but mm-hmm. but uh, it, it, in a lot of ways it's the opposite of what you do, and that's why I'm glad to be on the show. It's it's a real learning experience because we do a very like satellite overview of comics. It's mm-hmm. a very sort of 101 take on things, and we kind of see ourselves as the intersection of sort of like old comic fans obsession and sort of new readers excitement that's kind of how we look at it mm-hmm. um and you know we'll do different sort of spotlights we have a kind of conceptual angle to it so we'll do most of our episodes not exclusively we do deep dives on characters but a lot of our episodes are sort of about like let's say um like magic in comics or or maybe like we did an episode uh, police in comics or something like that mm-hmm. and and we'll do these spotlights that will have a character and i I think, well, how am I going to talk about one character for 15 whole minutes? <laughs> and then I look at your podcast and it's one character, a character I love very much, but like for like 150 episodes, I'm like, wait, <laughs> truly impressed. Well, Jerry, um, do not underestimate the power of the Ray Ramble. I can ramble <laughs> <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, but no, that's a great, yeah, I've been listening to you guys. Uh, it's, it's a whole heap of fun. Um, uh, uh, we were just talking off air before about uh, the, the more recent one, which is episode seventy-three, the comic book mm. BFFs and duos, and I call it—I called it out to you as well because when I was listening, it's like, yes, I'm glad you pointed out it was the, the Wonder Man Beast. Um, I guess buddy, 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 yeah. romance, yeah, uh, what, yeah, partnership, yeah. It's it's my, it's definitely more of a recurring like buddy. I don't know, bromance than anything, yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah, I mean, the two very underestimated characters, um, but, but very very fun to hear your guys' takes. Uh, other other things that, like, I'm just going through some of the things just totally off the top of my head, a few of the sure, deep yeah. dives I've heard. Uh, uh, there was um, comic book dads, I remember you did as well. Um, yeah, for rather, Father's Day. Yeah, yeah, Father's Day. Rather scathing, uh, actually, of the dads <laughs> in comics, which is rightly so, because they all are yeah. you know, a little bit of a... A little bit of pricks, um, but anyway, well, some of them can and, be, not all of them. And the truth, that when you put on your critic hat, 
you you start to become a bit of an asshole. And I think <laughs> that's when we review later, that's what I'm going to sort of my preamble is like, I am not, I don't mean to sound like an asshole and I oh. very much respect the comics that we're criti- criticizing, but yeah. yeah. Oh, look, I, I know you, I know you're good for it. Um, and, and very much welcome all sorts of views as well. I mean, geez, we had, there was a little bit of a, a little bit of a, you know, uh, I wouldn't say salty. Uh, a bit of hot, hot debate in the in our Facebook group of the the oh, recent wow. release. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't of the release at all. Someone actually posted. Uh, I think they were a new member, so shout out to uh, to the new member uh, named Lose Me. I think it's Michael, and uh, he decided to bring back that discussion about. Uh, and actually, I'd like to get your take on it. Of um, oh sure, of the Moon Knight TV series and it being potentially PG or R rated. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you, do you think that would hinder it at all? I do, but I don't think that that's kryptonite to the show potentially being good. I, I think it would be a misstep artistically. Uh, and it's a weird thing because I don't think that, that sh- the show, the character's ever going to be a kind of like, um, like I think it's always going to have a niche quality, mm. you know, in a good way. It might rise to a certain level of popularity. Like a good example uh, is do you remember the Spawn animated um, series from HBO? Yeah, only a couple of them. They're very dark, wasn't it? V- very dark, and I'm not saying Moon Knight needs to be that dark, but mm. my point is that that show was critically very well received. But it was also this kind of cool thing that only the cool people knew about. You mm. know, like in other words, I don't think Moon Knight's ever going to be Spider Man. I don't think he should be. Nah. So I mean, my feeling is like I would prefer it be R rated. Uh, mm-hmm. If they make it PG, I think the writing, the acting, all these sort of things can still save it. So there's no reason to panic or to like die on that hill. Yeah. I mean, again, not, I'm not shooting down anyone's, uh, anyone's opinions that were in the post and stuff, but just voicing my own as well. But uh, yeah, I, I agree as well. I think, um, I, I think it won't be the be all end all, you know, if it ends up being the PG, whatever was it, PG 13 rating. Um, I think they can tell some really good stories as long as they do keep those threads of mood night, uh, you know, true to the character. Uh, mm-hmm. It's funny, we'll get to some audio feedback uh, later on in the show. Uh, one of our listeners, Phil, he mentioned something ab- about his conspiracies of, of, uh, of you know, the Moon Knight TV show and such. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as long as there are, I guess, the threads, and for me it would be the, the identities, which is integral to mm-hmm. Moon Knight, as well as, as well as the Egyptian like mythology and, and Khonshu. Those two are the big things for me. I'd love to see them on, uh, translate over to TV. Um, yeah, I just wonder if they'll do both or they'll just pick one or the other. It's, it's, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, speaking of which, a nice little segue, pat on the back for Ray, that was cool. Speaking of Moon Knight, oh, hang on, this is a Moon Knight show, so <laughs> we're going to be talking about Moon Knight. Um, so you <laughs> are a big Moon Knight fan as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, always interested to know uh, what kind of got you into Moon Knight and, uh, and what are a few of the runs that really stick out for you? So, yeah, I'm a more recent Moon Knight fan, and I think that what it is is he's always been in my head a little bit uh, since I sort of foresaw the character. I think Moon Knight gets people that way. He's got a very striking aesthetic. It's sort of like Ghost Rider, and there's some other characters I could mention where, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think that he kind of got in people's head just based on, like, the image and the intrigue. There's a lot sort of mystery there. Um, There was a... Uh, there was a series that I only got a few issues of uh, in, I think, 2006 time. It was the Brian Fitch. Uh, I can't remember the writer on, on it. But, oh, Charlie Houston, um, 2006. Charlie Houston. Yeah. So fantastic stuff, but I didn't follow it, right? I only yeah. got – this was back when, like, you know, traits were less popular, so you would just mm-hmm. get issues every once in a while. And I just mm-hmm. re- remember thinking, oh, this is, you know, really good. Then I had some sense about him. He was in the West Coast Avengers. I'm a big Avengers fan. So I had awesome. some basically kind of like encyclopedic knowledge about him, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm a big Warren Ellis fan. And Warren Ellis, uh, his, um, like when that trade got released, mm. uh, that was the one that I, I found it spooky. <laughs> and I love that about it. Like, it, because it has this sort of like, it plays on the personalities because every issue you'd get a different sort of iteration of the character. Mm-hmm. And Ellis has this, I understand he's a problematic writer right now, but mm. this was before I knew all that. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. but he has this way of type. Uh, it's, it reminds me of like Grant Morrison where he speaks in this almost like quasi-religious language. Mm. And this is where I also heard the, the, 
expression the protector of travelers at night ah, right, like yes. as Kanchu. and i was kind of sold after that and then i'll just say there were like four or five runs on the character around that time where i don't it was an accident that they just put this insane level of talent mm. on the character various because you had uh i think i mean Bendis is supposedly controversial in terms of the Moon Knight run. I liked it, so I didn't really mm -hmm. have that experience. And then um, the Bemis stuff, yep. it, the Lemire stuff, it all happens really quick. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's like just a shot in the arm of like, I love Moon Knight. Mm. Specifically the Bemis story, though, uh, I think Crazy Runs in the Family. Yeah. Uh, to, to me, that's the essence of the character. And I was, yeah, I was like, well, I'll just go ahead and put him in the top five forever. That's, hey. yeah, so that's nice. Yeah. No, they're very, very good runs that you've um, that you've referenced. Uh, and the more I think of it, actually, because I, I do say it over and over again, uh, the more I think of it, I think the the Brian Michael Bendis run is, um, I mean, a lot of people it was very divisive, you know. Uh, but I think at the end of the Bendis, day, Bendis Bendis is div divisive, right? Yeah, he like is, it's yeah. He, he himself is. So yeah, yeah. On. But like, if you look at each and every run of Moon Knight, although there are commonalities and and threads that ring true to the character. They're so different, each of them. And we'll mm. get to this this Avengers run as well, which has caused so many ripples in the water about Moon Knight's portrayal. Um, let's, you know, just remember as well, it, it is an Avengers book. It's not the Moon Knight book. So uh, mm. there is a little bit more flex in, in, I believe, what the writers are doing, but we'll get into that. Um, so I think Bendis, yeah, although he is can seem problematic look he did the big thing he took he changed the identities he introduced wolverine mm -hmm. captain america spider-man which of yeah. course would cause a lot of problems um uh, but whether or not it's the worst uh run you know who's who's to say everyone's got you know their own ideas um, i have a question about that mm -hmm. just do you think that if they had done it as a kind of like out of continuity or like go, almost like quasi continuity story do you think people would have had the same level of ire because i i, I kind of felt like a lot of that anger was about them changing yeah. the moon knight status quo as opposed to sort of like thinking about the merits of the story yeah i oh, look i think to be to be honest i think you can um i think that solution would probably solve a lot of the runs that people are unhappy with uh, and mm -hmm. and that's kind of actually testament to i think the lack of continuity nowadays of marvel comics uh mm. which so in my head canon <laughs> I always think this is not the real continuity anyway. Yeah, I know it's it's like burying your head in yeah. the sand and, and denying it. But if you look at it, there's so many flaws in their continuity that it's easy to just go, look, okay, this is going to be the writer's interpretation of the character that I like. It's going to be a self-contained thing because I know the next run is may not reference it at all. And more often than not, it, it doesn't. And so there's that little freedom with that, but... There's also the I, I don't know how long we can stay on this topic, yeah. but I'll, I'll say like there's this suspension of disbelief that you get to have when a person has Mark's disability. So mm. you know, so he's I don't I like this idea of like we need to have strict continuity. It's like I don't know that he has strict continuity in his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like his dis. I think it's the term now is disassociative personality yes. disorder. Is that it? yeah? Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's the idea of the the emergence of new and temporary personalities that then would subside i can live with that mm -hmm. i can say he had a weird week in la yeah that, you know but yeah that that's a good point as well yeah so that would actually even further validate bendis's run um so to speak uh yeah i mean uh, i don't know yeah so th that's how i kind of kind of um justify everything in my head um but uh yeah no it's a. Uh, it's it's an interesting thing. I think Moon Knight. I mean, I think Lemire did it best. You're talking about the head cannon and stuff. He really, uh, mm -hmm. he really went into that more cerebral aspect of Moon Knight. He really concentrated that on on that. He managed to masterfully put in. It's one of my favorite runs. Masterfully put in uh, the Egyptian qualities, like um, and having it like gloriously ambiguous. Uh, a conchu. Mm. Like I, I, you know, if you read it once or twice, you've really got to wonder okay what is real or not you know and this whole thing is kind of fluttering in the air what what lemire did i think most effectively better than anybody and he's not necessarily my favorite guy but he's up there for me yeah. is that the experience of reading his narrative feels a little crazy yeah in a way yeah. that like you know so if, I, I love the, the bemis run but to compare the two in, in bemis the narrative is very lucid mm. mark is sort of crazy inside of it 
Yeah. Whereas when you follow the diegetic journey in, in Lemire's run, it feels very like, I don't really know what's happening mm. but from moment to the next. And it's I think it's really effective. He, he almost doesn't get enough credit for how sophisticated that move is, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, it's been, we, we've spoken about it here on the show as well, because it had, uh, he had mentioned it in interviews that uh, he really had a lot of free reign. Uh, sometimes the, the writers are given... Uh, a, a kind of a parameter where they're meant to go by mm. editorial, but he apparently was allowed to just, you know, do whatever he wanted, and you can tell like he did. So he was allowed to be a good writer. Yeah, and he was <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, just before we, we we get into our review, though, Jared, I want to know because you mentioned you uh, are a big Avengers fan. I'm assuming that extends to the West Coast Avengers as well. Yeah, less so just because that was such a particular run. I'm I'm mm. really sort of like again at the I'm wiki conversant in it. Yeah, okay. like I know a lot of the main stories and who is in it and stuff like that. I didn't follow the Moon Knight stuff unfortunately, okay. and it's sort of only in retrospect. But I, I any recommendation do you have? Oh, I, I'm, yeah, absolutely. I'm into absolutely. Um, yeah. well, I'm not sure if. Uh... I'm not sure if you're a, a, an epic collection collector or not. They're great a little uh, bit. publications, yeah, by Marvel, and they stock in, what, 15 or 20 issues in one hit, and it's quite affordable considering the amount that you get. Um, there's a, the second volume of the West Coast Avengers epic collection. I think it covers the Moon Knight um, part of it, Lost in Space slash Time. Um, mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's kind of it's a good one. It's when, when they kind of go back... I don't know where they go. They go back in time and space into ancient Egypt and they come across Conchu uh, and uh, it turns out that um, from some weird time travel thing, Hawkeye's technology or prowess um, was the influence that made Moon Knight's um, weapons, you know, from the ancient Egypt's, uh, Egyptians. That's... That sounds like the Avengers. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, if it's not the X-Men, it's got to be the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. Some craziness I- like that. I, I can I just ask? Does it? Do you feel like it holds up in the reading? Because uh, like when I go back to even the Jack Kirby, uh, Stanley stuff, like I love the concepts that are there. I love yeah. the design. A lot of times, I'll have to admit the the right. It is sort of hard for me to get through yeah. the stories because they're just so stilted and 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 things like that. They come out of a nineteen sixties era sort of newspaper yeah. journalism. And there Hawkeye was, yeah. holding his oh. arrow, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, well, you know, having actually collected uh, some of the epic collections, well, I know, um, actually, the the Moon Knight one in the West Coast is all right, because it's in the in the 70s, early 70s, yeah. the mid-70s, and there is a distinct difference in writing. I know exactly what you mean. Stilted is a is a fantastic way to describe it. Uh, the, the Daredevil of the 60s, I found, of reading the, the, the first appearance of Daredevil, blah, 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 his first 14 issues, my gosh, that was a little bit of a slog. I'm a big fan of Daredevil, but that was a slog. Oh, yeah. Pre um, pre Frank Miller Daredevil, he's like a a fetish tumbler. He doesn't have <laughs> yeah, a lot he, of elements. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but later on though, once I hit the six the seventies, uh, I think with um, uh, I think Gene Colan, I think, and Stan mm-hmm. Lee actually, he he, t- he tightened up his writing. Um, but anyway, to answer your question, uh, you know, I, I think it holds up the West Coast Avengers um, sure. Lost in Space Time. Uh, a little bit more wordy, as you'd, you'd expect from that era. But uh, Al Milgram um, art, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. He's he's like a very classic. Com- yeah. Same. Oh, uh, awesome. uh, yeah, Al Milgram's amazing. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Okay, well, yeah, but, um, that's definitely worth checking out. Um, right, well, I think... Jared, are you are you up for a, you know you you crack the knuckles? You're up for a bit of a review here. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna tear this book a new <laughs> asshole. I'm really excited. No, I mean I I have a lot of criticism, but there's yeah, sure. amazing stuff. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, we'll let's take a, a short break. We'll hear from a couple of our fellow collective members, and after that, we'll be back with our our review. Hey there. I'm sure you know about the Capes and Lunatics podcast, but have you heard about the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast? It's a fun home for classic and new reviews of just about everything. We have the Ultimate Spider Cast, where we cover everything Spider Man. The Quantum Zone, where we talk the classic Marvel character Quasar and do deep dives on the cosmic side of Marvel. We also have Comic Capers, where we cover everything old and new in comics. It could be anything, any company, any decade. And we also have our Media Mondays, where we cover some kind of TV show, be it a Arrowverse, uh, current hits, or 
our summer specials where we do reviews of uh, classic episodes of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer spinoff Angel. So, if you're a fan of pop culture and media, you should really check it out. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Welcome back, loony listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 155. I'm joined by Jared from the Phantom Zone podcast, and we are doing Avengers 34, baby. It is a new comic book that was released. It has Moon Knight in it. We're ready to go. Jared, you've you've got your notes. I've seen them. Mm-hmm. Um, they you, exist. You exist. You've got your headphones. It's on correctly. <laughs> Probably. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've got my notes here. I'm just hoping the battery doesn't run out. But here we go. Anyway, so loonies, as mentioned in the top of the show, uh, who cares about the phase of the moon? Up yours, Conchu. Uh, This is a new comic book. So we're going straight into it. Avengers Volume 8, Issue 34, Part 2, The Age of Conchu, The Fist of Vengeance. Now, this is available on floppy format. Um, You can get that. I'm not sure if there are, are variant covers. Probably not, maybe. Who knows? Marvel pumps out variants like no tomorrow so um mm-hmm. and uh, and or a digital so you can get it from the marvel store or from comics ology or kindle uh, this was published in july 2020 and uh, we have writer jason aaron penciler and inker javier garon uh, colorist jason keith letterer Corey petite and we have a triumvirate of editors tom bravort alana smith and martin byro they needed three of them to pump out this. This is awesome. Anyway, so first time listeners, what we usually do is we will go through a bare bones, what I like to call it's a synopsis, and that will be read uh, very kindly by Jared. And uh, then we will go into a uh, into a discussion rounding out things like writing, art, themes, characterizations, any references to other runs, and we'll cap it off with our moon rating system. Now, Jared, you have a choice of two different rating systems. One is the vanilla rating. The other is from Konishu, a high priest of Konishu, his patented rating system. It's all there in front of you. You can choose at your leisure. All right, so, Jared, uh, if you'd be so kind, would you be able to give the fair loonies the bare bones for this issue? Yeah, and let's see how well I do at reading things. Okay, (laughs) so... uh... Weeks ago, Moon Knight was astonished to find a disturbed and shaken Khonshu in its very own temple of worship. The god of the moon has had visions not dissimilar to Moon Knight of devilish deeds and the world in ruin. In the present, Moon Knight and Khonshu visit Mephisto, still incarcerated in a mystical prison in Las Vegas. Mephisto is killed, and as Khonshu mentions, the devil's murder is only the first step. He declares that he, and not Moon Knight, be, the respons- uh, be responsible for taking on the greater, more ancient evil lurking beyond. Kanchu converts the island of Manhattan into his own image, and reality as we know it is at the mercy of the moon god. Uh, T'Challa is held prisoner as Moon Knight tries to extract the primordial power from the Wakandan Avenger, but with little success. Moon Knight reveals that his faith in Kanchu isn't totally blind, and we see Moon Knight utilize Ghost Rider's powers and turn to the fist of vengeance in search of Starbrand. Elsewhere, Iron Man and Captain Marvel guard Brandy, who is the infant with the Star Brand, but it's not long, but it's not long before they are surrounded by undead Egyptian mummies. Kanchu has come for them. Yes, thank you, Jared. Awesome mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, um, I'm glad, like you know, you were mentioning you hope you read it very well. I was actually hoping that it was written okay because. <laughs> Yeah, I'm um, not the best. Uh, not the best with that. Um, but yeah, was, thank you. You wrote it. You wrote it in Portuguese, and I had to. Con- to yeah, it, but that was good. <laughs> you did yeah. very well on the fly there. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. I must say, uh, no, very well indeed. So, Loonies, that was a, a summation of it. If you haven't had a chance to read it, there you go. It's there, right in front of you. Now, I guess before we get into the nitty gritty details, Jared, overall impressions. What did you think of this? Uh, and maybe give us give us a little bit of what you thought of thirty three. How how are these working together so far? Yeah, so uh, the first thing I want to say just about that is that I understand because, you know, you criticize something like that. The first thing people are going to say is wait till the story's over. Mm. And I think that's true. So we're only I'm only going to say what my sense of things so far Um, and my sort of like, I don't know, like broad brush impression is that this is Jason Aaron's like when he doesn't write 
the way that I like him to write. I'll put it that way. <laughs> this is what happens. So it's sort of very typical. And I think what we're getting here is something very similar to the rest of his Avengers run, which is what I've described as kind of two dimensional grandiose spectacle mm-hmm. at the at the expense of more like building tension and character development and stuff like that so sort of i love these splash pages i love seeing these images of like mark kicked the shit out of iron fist mm. that's hard to see if you're an iron fist fan i'll be honest i have yeah. sympathy for them i've heard that you as know. well yeah from iron fist uh, fans <laughs> and and i i think jason aaron kind of works that way he's very kind of like he doesn't care how fragile you feel like the toys are. He's going to smash them together at, if he thinks it's fun. So, yeah. sorry. Sorry, Iron Fist people. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, yes, I mean, that's that's basically the, the sense I have. There's intriguing things about the story. Overall, I think it's way too – it's also – it's almost like too many huge flamboyant pops, you know, and not a lot of story in here. Like, yeah. the, you know. This yeah. is image comics from the 90s, is what, <laughs> what I'm saying. Oh, look, nothing wrong with the 90s, but no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, yeah, what you said is is very kind of well-rounded, and I couldn't have really put it better myself. Look, I, I'm enjoying the run as well. I, I'm, I'm finding it good. And it's interesting. It's good to, to get a sense of someone who is a, an avid Avengers fan like yourself. So you, mm-hmm. you've been there from the start. So you've actually, I'm sure you've, you've read all of this run from, from issue mm-hmm. one onwards and, you know, before that. Um I I tend to agree. Um, the way I think about it as well is uh, Jason Aaron. He can be on his game, right? You know, he can be really good, yes. uh, and and you go, wow. You know, he's this is Jason Aaron. It's a Jason Aaron book. You know, it's going to be fine because he's really good. He can do that, but sometimes he is a big concepts man. I think, like as in, um, mm-hmm. or scenario man. Uh, maybe not even a concept man. It's like this would be a cool scenario to have like moon knight versus iron fist this would be cool uh, moon knight carrying mjolnir or the uru hammer um yeah but the story itself uh doesn't seem to there doesn't seem to be much behind that um and again i, I mean as you say there's a, the caveat of let's wait and see what's happening uh, we're on issue part two at the moment it's a six-parter um so very soon we'll be going okay well things better flesh out a bit more soon <laughs> otherwise we're going to have to wrap this up soon um so it's not to say that i'm not enjoying it because it, it, it is it is a fun ride but um i find also as well and we'll get into it i'll probably repeat myself but it, everything so many big scale things happening so quickly like there's not enough to really make it a a, a grand statement um and i'm going to save that little bit from what i'm talking about but absolutely agree with you on that front so uh I guess I'm saying I've got a little bit of mixed mixed feelings about this current run, um, but anyway, uh, I want to say also for context, just yes. because Jason Aaron has also been a weird like political figure in in sort of like the larger comic world, especially. Look, I'm a huge Thor fan. I loved Jason Aaron's run on Thor. Mm-hmm. I I didn't care that well. I did care a little bit, but that we got Jane Foster and replaced Thor. I thought it was fantastic stuff. Mm-hmm. So I want to be clear. It's I. This what's so perplexing about him. He reminds me of Bendis a lot, actually. Where his highs are incredibly high. So mm. this is I. I'm I'm going to be. Uh, I hate when people are like, oh, he's just a shitty writer. No, yeah, he's yeah. very clearly mm-hmm. not. But yeah. I think this is a pretty flagrant misstep for some pretty like mechanical reasons but yeah yeah and and also look i can't really speak too much of it because i haven't done you know i'm not a a huge huge invested ghost rider fan say for instance but i've been i've been tweeting with a few ghost rider fans actually i really like the jason aaron ghost rider run i thought it was just really good Sure, you, me too. Yeah, but if you you talk to like the diehard fans and stuff, and you talk about continuity and what we were talking about with what is the threat of Moon Knight, the threat of Ghost Rider, apparently Jason Aaron's kind of out the window, you know. Um, so there've can, been a can lot. We, of... Can we address that real quick? Yeah, sure. I just, just because the, uh, that's going to be lurking in the background from all these criticisms. We, the, mm-hmm. People are so partisan mm. with these characters that they love. You think that I liked seeing Thor get crushed by a thousand moons? No, but <laughs> that's one of the stronger parts of the story. Yeah, it really. I mean, at some. I mean, I thought the Mjolnir being moon rocks is stupid, yeah. but I thought that was cool. But the, <laughs> I mean, it's a it's yeah. a cool moment, but yeah. it's sort of like also Aaron does this pro- thing where he's like, uh, "I'm going to profoundly change the nature of continuity." Mm. 
but which is fine. But to just fit into this story, in other words, he needs to get Moon Knight to control the hammer. Yeah. So he ha- he has to come up with some reason, and the reason, rather than just be like, Conchu is a mystically powerful Galactus level threat, he can just do shit like that. Mm. He- he's like, ah, the- it was Moon Rocks the whole time. What, a- like, if if Moon White was, uh, or sorry, if-, if he was writing Hulk doing this to Thor, it would be like, it was gamma gamma energy the whole time. Yeah, we didn't know yeah. that about the hammer. It was filled with gamma energy. Yeah. So anyway, but, yeah. but the point is, they say- but the point is, like, it bothers me that fans are going to judge this on the basis of. You know, did he write the character the way that I thought of? And even worse, did he make my character win fights? <laughs> you know, that's yeah, yeah, just yeah, not yeah. a good criticism. So yeah, true. I mean, I mean, you, you have a, a very good point. I, I think, um, yeah, oh, I've lost my point, but um, no, no, absolutely, I, I, I agree. I think uh, you can't, you can't be too precious about. At the end of the day, that was what I was about to say. At the end of the day, you. you People have a love for their character, and it's like you know, I love him, and and this is this is the this is the Moon Knight that I want to see, you know. Yeah. And a lot of people may, and I'm not gonna, you know, some people may hold up the 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 twelve issue Charlie Houston run, the twelve issues out of three hundred and fifty issues of Moon Knight, they hold mm-hmm. that as that's the definitive Moon Knight, uh, and so every Moon Knight should kind of be like that, or or you know, um, granted, Jason Aaron is doing something crazy with Moon Knight now with with cosmic powers and stuff but at the yeah. end of the day he's he's a writer he's he's there to to think creatively and to to do something you know not necessarily intentionally outlandish but he's got a he's got to you know flex his creative muscles as well so absolutely um i think it's- yeah you can't just go oh okay well i'm going to come in and i'm going to do a really good job by just writing kind of a very a very expected uh, depiction you, of Moon Knight. Do you know that old sort of like, I think it's a Buddhist parable about the, the blind men touching the elephant? No, no. It's, it, it applies here because it's that idea. The, the parable is, is that like you have all these blind men sort of like feeling an elephant trying to figure out what it is. Mm-hmm. And one touches the tusks and says, well, an elephant's like a spear. Yeah. And one of them touches oh, the okay. legs and says, one of them, it's like a tree. Yes. So they're all getting a different version of this. And I feel like we do this with characters. You know, we have a, a run that we like or a take that we like. And we say that's the er- essence of the character. But it's not – it's a much more collective – practice in reality it's it's the same thing like for some people superman is just about swooping in and saving women that is if you don't have that you don't have superman for some people it's like his sort of like relationships around the office and the interplay Mm. and i feel the same way with moon knight i can't tell you that my moon knight is better than aaron's new moon knight Mm. but my criticism i will say is that i think there's something unique to this character something very valuable on mm-hmm. the basis of what the histories bore out and aaron seems to have an almost this is my shitty part mm-hmm. child childish underappreciation for what the people before him carved out that made that character so interesting so yeah, yeah we'll get into we'll get into that i'm sure but well, yeah, I mean, actually, just one other point just to hold on to there as well. You mentioned uh, Warren Ellis as well. I'll give you a good example as well. Mm. Warren Ellis's run, a lot of people like it, which is fantastic. And again, I'm not I'm not saying that, um, I'm not telling listeners what they should or shouldn't like, you know, and, and sorry, I'm just, just putting that as a disclaimer. If you, yeah. if you feel strongly about, you know, if the tusk is of the elephant is your part of Moon Knight, then that's great, that's fantastic. Anyway, the Warren Ellen, Ellis thing. Uh, totally different. He spun it on his, his head. He actually created a new character, Mister Knight, as well, which has mm-hmm. never really appeared. It appeared a little, a little bit in the Secret Avengers, um, but um, it, it's come over into his run of 2014. Uh, the thing is, though, that you know that there was, um, I guess, appreciation for the character and the, the legacy because there were a lot of references. Actually, a lot of references to the Mensch run of, of, of the 1980s. Um, so that was peppered through, and I don't think it was token. It, uh, it was actually, it was, I thought it was well thought out, and it was um, kind of inserted in each of those six issues. And so you get a sense that, okay, so he's telling this story, he's going out on a limb here by, you know, by showing us a very different Moon Knight, but mm-hmm. he kind of respects the what what you know what what has been written before and and i think that's a i think that's a good thing um but yeah uh, anyway that that's uh just my my thought on it so anyway <laughs> um all right so i guess uh let's get into let's get into this issue uh any um 
well, why don't we do, do you want to kick off Jared any points of any of the writing the art that you want to bring up or the characterizations that we can have a chat about yeah uh, so in this issue specifically look I mean I just think the art I, I should have who is it uh, Karen is that uh, the guy's Javier Garon yeah Garon I just think it's great stuff. Mm. I, I have no criticism about the art here. Uh, I love that it's it's got bizarre angles at times, mm. but the lines are super crisp. It's what I think. I'm, I don't have a great visual vocabulary. I'm much more of a talker, as it's clear. <laughs> but I do, it's a very lucid sort of style. So I just think it's worth mentioning You know, past that. Somebody can better describe it than me. Um, so much of this takes place in this sort of like projected possible reality later on. Mm-hmm. That it's hard for me. It's any time they do that, it's like it's hard to say that the characterization is bad. I don't know what's happened in the intervening period of time. Um, the one thing I will say, and I'm not Mister Woke necessarily, uh, but I thought that the choice to have Black Panther in chains was probably a relatively profound, profound, and even disturbing image for. A relatively cheap kind of moment in the story mm. and you know i just think that i don't want to say that you know everybody's going to be so sensitive and and stuff like that but it, it it's just really weird because aaron as a writer has had this kind of like reputation as being really sort of sensitive to these social justice issues and i think that's good the problem is is that with this level of inconsistency i just thought it was really weird to see one of the great black kings one of the only characters in comic history to have to be in chains for again this sort of story it's a i don't know it's it gets Mm. very roots so anyway i just thought i would enter that into the conversation oh no no yeah that's a that's a very interesting point i i came across a a few uh, a couple of other comments similar to that about about um t'challa in the chains as well um yeah, uh, look, uh, f- for myself, uh, I-, I was happy he-, he took on 50 priests at the end and, and he beat the crap yes. out of them all. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Um, I mean, I agree. Yeah. It doesn't make him seem like a bitch or anything. No, like no, that, not but, at all. Yeah. But no, but I, I, I t- certainly take your point about what it could convey and, and you know, how it may, may not be, I mean, for such a, I guess, an in- arbitrary thing, really, in the story, uh, mm-hmm. it was only a scene of, basically, it was just setting up him and Moon Knight talking and the the thrux of the the sorry the the thrust and the crux of it so the thrux of it um, <laughs> is uh is that we see the fist of vengeance but but I think that was basically it there there was a lot of back and forth about you know you're you're under the faith of Conchu you're just a blindly following no I'm not I've actually I've got a little something I've kept that was all it is really I mean they're trying and- to also get his primordial power which. In issue thirty three, it was already mentioned it's within his blood. So I don't know what they're trying to do by capturing him, but I guess it was just to show that they were over they overpowered Wakanda. I guess that was what they were showing. Yeah, and and the thing is, is that they can have that conversation in a lot of ways, mm. in a lot of positions with a lot of visuals. Yeah. So he could have been behind a force field. Mm. He could have been in. I know this is weird, but we are talking about a kind of a medium that's based on iconography. Mm. He could have been in a more like rack like position mm-hmm. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But to literally be in chains and getting whipped by priests, it, mm. it, you know. Anyway, okay. And I, I don't think we should st- uh, spend no, no. too long on this, only because I'm sure Aaron didn't. This wasn't his intention, but it is. It's so <clears throat> in the middle of this issue, yes. and it so takes up so much panel that it's. I. It's kind of hard not to like think about. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I guess that's a good way to lead into. What are your thoughts then on the? So this was a, a an example for me of. Uh, so Aaron's got great ideas when it comes to great scenarios, and so mm-hmm. what were your thoughts on the Fist of Vengeance, which is what this whole title was, uh, you know, this whole issue was titled? Um, what did you think of Moon Knight showing his? Uh, he's got I don't know what it is. Is it Zarathos or I, I, I can't follow it these days. Who who the, it's? Yeah, it's confu- It's <clears throat> confusing. The Ghost. I'm a big Ghost, Ghost Rider fan too, mm-hmm. and it's been it's really confusing now. Uh, the truth is, is that the Ghost Riders are these sorts of like principal deities or angels and there are many of them sometimes like Zarathos was the one mm-hmm. with uh Johnny Blaze but Dan Ketch had um god what was the guy's name uh, Noble Kane? Kale Noble Kale Noble no, no, Kale yeah and and then uh and then the recent one Robbie Ray's Ghost Rider which I love isn't even a demon it was his uncle, uncle who serial in, killer in, or something yeah, yeah. yeah exactly and he invoked some demonic powers so there's not even a kind of like 
super a principled sort of deity or or mm-hmm. something like that involved. And so now that like the somebody I think needs to go back and create a more robust architecture mm-hmm. to that. But so so in other words, in this case, okay, he just has demony powers. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it, it it's sort of like I think, but yeah, I mean it's super cool yeah. that he's 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 using that. And and honestly, the temporary nature of all this makes me feel like you know do it do it up like mm. I, th- those are the parts that least bother me i think okay uh b- yeah because they they like you have to face it if you really love these things the sad thing is it's so it you know continuity is like a scatter plot mm. if you have something way outside of it i it doesn't matter that it's canon cuz no one's going to pay attention to it yeah 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 you that's know, you true. Have... yeah yeah and, and no one's unless you get some writer decades down the track and they'll pick it out as a, a an yeah. odd reference and it's like oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I thought it was just a, a cool thing. Um, I just had it in the back of my mind as well because I'm I'm a big fan of the the Inner Demons, the Ghost Rider podcast. They're they're part mm. of our kind of informal network, and uh, I know that they were a little exhausted at the fact that anyone anyone and everyone can seem to become a Ghost Rider. I know this is a different scenario because Moon Knight uh, actually absorbed the powers through his Ankh and through cosmic kind of. Well, let, me, so. <laughs> let me just say from yeah. the Thor coalition, from the Hammer Brothers <laughs> of the world, we're getting equally tired yes. of people picking up that goddamn hammer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I totally I feel you. Exactly. And actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because the other thing, Aaron gets negative points here for mm. repeating recent stories. The 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 so um, there's two stories specifically that he didn't plagiarize, but it's sort of like. This also loses some spectacle or some interest just on the basis. So DeConnick did a uh, – not DeConnick. What's her uh, – the recent Captain Marvel writer. Um, oh, Tom, Thompson, Kelly Thompson. Think, yeah, Kelly Thompson. Yeah. yeah. So she did a story where Captain Marvel goes yes. through each adventure and beats yeah. them in an interesting way. You know, yeah. it's okay. That's a fun story. So Moon Knight doing this – yeah, you can do it again. But it's yeah. not – I wouldn't even describe it as plagiaristic or even no. derivative maybe because I don't know. Maybe you had that idea already. But mm. I just saw this. Also, in Jason's Aaron's Thor run, in one of his King Thor moments, he has Thor and Doctor Doom respectively collecting all of these sort of principles. So the Star Brand, the Iron Fist, the Ghost oh, Rider. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's worth going back. So this feels a little self cannibalistic, right? Um, and oh, if yeah. Yeah. If you're a Moon Knight fan, it's yeah. like, oh my god, he's doing all this. It's like, yeah, but we did see Doctor yeah. Doom who had the star brand, the Iron Fist. Right. You know, it's Aaron just likes taking other people's powers and yeah. giving someone those powers. But you know, whatever. I actually I had that thought as well. I, I haven't been following the whole Aaron run um of the Avengers. I stopped I think a little after uh, around the, the time of the Ghost Rider centric story. Um so mm-hmm. I missed the whole Captain Marvel one, but I remember because I always I, I'm a big fan of um uh like the Kelly Thompson and the Captain Marvel run. Uh, mm-hmm. But I remember thinking, yeah, I was like, hang on. When I was reading The Age of Conchu and the whole thing, the whole premise, I was thinking, hang on, didn't Captain Marvel go bad just, just not that long ago? And didn't she beat everyone else not that long ago? Yeah. It's, um, yeah, anyway. So, so what do we have now? We have somebody, we've said a story that like mostly seems to revolve around these spectacles and mm-hmm. these big moments. And then we find those moments have actually already happened before. So th- that's why I was saying, like, I, yeah. the more I thought about this, the more I was like, I don't think I, I don't think this is really good. But yeah. anyway, yeah, we'll, no, no we'll worries, no, no. Th- these are all good, all good points. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna um, throw in a couple of cards in on the table there yeah. as well and say um, about this whole thing about we talked about the the pacing being too fast paced and stuff um, with the writing. So look, a lot of it was cool. Um, Moon Knight seems to be just. In issues thirty three and thirty four, just be like going out like a, a, a bat out of hell, just doing all this stuff really quickly. Um, things like for me in this issue with the new Thebes uh, as uh, the, the island of Manhattan, I actually would have thought that would have been really nice to flesh out and see how Conchus created that. Like mm-hmm. the, you're talking about big scale, this is a big scale thing. He's converted the whole city, nay, the whole world in his image. Uh, and we get like one panel. There's one little panel of Spider-Man who, incidentally, I think he had a pretty cool little quip uh, in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, one little bit of Spider-Man, just some mummies. It's all kind of glossed over. And then we get into some other scenario, which was uh, T'Challa, and then finally with Iron Man and Captain Marvel. And then they get overwhelmed by some mummies. Uh, there's not enough time to really 
kind of to, to sink in this idea that Conchu has taken over the world and how big this is. And I think that's one of the failings of this issue. Um, yeah, I don't know. What are you, your thoughts are similar? I, I, I think that's exactly right. I'll be honest that uh, I didn't uh, notice it as much at the time, but I think that's very true. Mm. And I also think that there's like, it's one thing to talk about economic storytelling. Uh, and I think that at a level of proposition, sure. So he says, this happened. I can mm-hmm. accept this happened. We could move on. So the story can logically cohere. But I think you're absolutely right that there's no, you don't get to digest it. You don't get to think about its implications. We're mm. right, and and it feels all the more paper thin, like yeah. for that fact. So I think yeah, I think that's very true. I, it doesn't. It's not the thing that most bothers me about the story though. And as a matter of fact, the the weird thing about the pacing here is it might be happening too fast. But a plus on that is I will say. There's a lot of suspense in this story so far, and I I do like that. I am like, because actually, I didn't think about this. You said it's a, this is two part in a six part series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, okay. That that actually makes me feel a little bit better about all this. Okay. Okay. Because I am very much like, I wonder where this is going. So I have to I have to give it that credit at least. Yeah. I, I guess I was feeling this way with this issue because I was actually very um, positive of thirty three and and the quick pace there because. One of the, I think the pitfalls that some writers do is that they'll drag it on too long, and before you know it, you're in you're in part five or or the finale, and you've got to wrap things up. I thought, okay, I thought in issue thirty three, Aaron's just gone wham like a blitzkrieg through it all, and he set yeah. up things. And I thought that's great, that's fun. Like let's get into the the meat of it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then yeah. when I read this, which I enjoyed as well, and there are big moments in there, big touchstones like Moon Knight killing Mephisto, um, and, and you know we see Starbrand towards the end. Um, but I just felt uh, that, you know, slow down. Like, the, this, this this is meant to be the age of Conchu. I have in my mind the age of Ultron. I have big, I have big grand ideas of, of uh, big, massive events. And I know it's not a big event. I know it's only a six-parter. But you can still tell quite a involved story in six parts. Um, but I just felt that this, this uh, issue uh, just flew by again. Um, yeah. Aaron does this a little bit uh, mm. anyway, which is that... He kind of has this way of just trying to connect these poster images mm-hmm. and they always like so his fight scenes in, in this and it's you know th- that's a difficult thing to figure out how it's scripted like how much the artist has to do with it how mm-hmm. much the writer directs them but in, in this series it's mostly just, whenever there's a fight it's just like a, a different panels of people posing next to each other <laughs> yeah, yeah and there's it just all runs very quick and as a matter of fact to your point I think there was a way to write this. I'm going to tell Jason Aaron how to write stuff. There was a way to write this to maybe make it feel a little bit more lived in, which is that if they had taken the Spider-Man and not just had that sort of uh, no, funny but kind of like momentary cheap quip, yep. if they had had a few panels of him living in that world, mm, yes. of him maybe evading some mummies or something like that, you you know, he he's like uh, evading mummies, he goes out through the window, and then you see how big new Thebes is mm. i think that that would have given it a more immersive feel as opposed to just this like this is what the city's like now mm. so you know yeah and and similar to that point as well you know they've done it before in in other arcs as well you have spider-man but you show like um, residents of new york like maybe the resident heroes and stuff so all their different scenarios and and by having that, you kind of show the expanse of it, but you also you kind of start to to get a sense rather than just have that overview of Conchu looking at that newly the new architecture and and the um and the the monuments in the city. So uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I mean there are some. I mean I'm not I'm not going to we're not totally hopefully panning this whole thing. It's a it has some oh, very no. good very good points as well. I just wanted to point out with the art as well. You're talking about the fight scenes. Uh, one of the the really really cool splashes for me was uh, that first side of Conchu. I think Garon really hit that on the head with uh, with Aaron. The writing, it's meant to show that suspense. And um, Moon Knight, at the very beginning, weeks ago, Moon Knight's kind of busting through the temple and they're going, no, no, don't go see Conchu. He goes, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack him one for, uh, you know, I told him the state of my brain, blah, blah, blah. But we see him kind of cowering in the shadows. And, and I love that little, that image of Conchu. Um, I thought it was very different because you usually see Conchu in a very kind of imposing, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, role. Uh, but yeah, no, that that was good. Any, any... Um, particular bits of art there that you did uh, enjoy from this issue? I wanted to go to 33, by the way, mm-hmm. and I can with yeah. two things. Uh, one, because I said the fights have sucked in Aaron's run. Uh, that, With the exception not only of, but especially that Iron Fist 
Moon Knight fight. I was going to say two things that, but to answer your question about the art. Yep. That art I have loved. Mm. I, I just thought it was great. And the fight's super well scripted. I hope we get more of that. Um, again, as far as the particular images and stuff like that in this, I think I was the last image. I don't want to skip too far uh, if we want to take our time here. But like, I have to admit that last still with uh, Captain Marvel and Iron Man being closed in. I think it's super effective. Just the like we forget that like they have to do a choice on how to bring I don't know how to describe this, but like the camera of the panel, like where they place that, mm-hmm. like the perspective and stuff like that, having it closed in there, I just think it's a very smart artistic choice. That yeah, absolutely. Like we were talking about layouts and stuff, it gives you that very claustrophobic um uh, mm-hmm. uh, kind of tone which you'd want because of that sorry, because of the mummy is kind of starting to overwhelm. Um it is funny, yeah, with Starbrand. Just want a, a quick aside, just just in case some loonies, and I'm glad I've got you here, Jerry, because I know that you, you've read the issues. I did a bit of reading, so I know, um, what is it, issues 27 to 30 was Starbrand Reborn. And so this mm-hmm. is Brandy, right? And so um, she is the daughter of Suzanne Selby. Um, who... Yeah, but in the context of that run, we know next to <clears throat> nothing about these these people. Okay. She's a nurse, I believe. Okay, and she's kidnapped, or you know, because her child has the star brand. Yep. And, um, and, yeah, and so the heralds and all that. So there was a whole mm-hmm. uh, whole action thing involving Galactus. Is that right, or or the Silver Surfer? No, just the heralds. And and okay. the deal is that the star brand is. You get the sense here. Uh, if you if folks don't know, it's this sort of like mysterious cosmic force specifically tied to the Earth. That's kind of a weird mm. sort of thing. It's okay. sort of like <clears throat> I don't want to say like almost like Captain Universe, but like okay. on the Earth side. But anyway, so um, it's Aaron's presentation of this is also that it's really volatile. We've had a few uh, like the Ghost Rider and one of the previous Star Brands got into a fight in his run early on, and like I think Ghost Rider killed it. It was sort of confusing. He just explodes. He needs to explode. Uh, it it gets sort of like re uh, it it just pops up. It's like the Dalai Lama. It just the new person gets assigned <laughs> or something like that. And so she the baby uh, uh, gets it, and all the heralds are deeply concerned as well as the Shi'ar government uh, are are worried that it's it's like. No human can contain the evil power or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not not that you know any humans had it before. I mean, there's been a fair few, right? Yeah. So no, exa- No, no, no. It's it's you. It usually is a human phenomenon. Oh, okay. That's the weird thing because oh, okay. it's like tied tied to Earth for some reason. Oh, oh, know. yeah, of course, as you say. So okay, it's right. a very very much an Earth Earth thing. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry. Just just threw me there <laughs> um, yeah i do that sorry yeah that, that, that's cool uh right so um also i mean i guess art wise as well uh the the depiction of moon knight and ghost rider was was pretty cool uh i enjoyed oh that was what i was gonna i was gonna say i was vamping for time there jared if you mm. if you are <laughs> if you want <laughs> and listeners probably are familiar enough with what i do anyway um Starbrand. So it's interesting that you're saying it's a chaotic force, right? Um, Because I was about to pose a question, uh, although it kind of doesn't make any sense. Uh, Would Starbrand be this force that Khonshu is going after? I mean, not not only to capture the force, but um, would Starbrand be potentially this evil that is more evil than Mephisto? Because we see here that Mephisto is killed. Khonshu says, you know, He's he's like one of the first. He'll come back or whatever. But there's actually something else out there that I've got to deal with, and that's why he takes Mjolnir, right? And he says, "I'll do this yes. myself." So there's something else out there. A lot of speculation. I said way back that it was the worm, which I don't think it is now. Uh, that was from the the serpent. Um, oh God, what was it? It was the Conan one. Serpent War. Serpent War. Uh, I think it is the Serpent War. Yeah, I'm reading that now. It's actually oh, pretty yeah. pretty cool. Pretty. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I got it. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. I like yeah. I, I liked it as yeah. well. I think it's good. And actually, yeah. good. Good that you've read it because I've got another question. But um, mm. yeah. So I don't know. Who do you think the big bad is then? I mean, if it's not Mephisto, I, actually, I I'm not sure that it's not Mephisto. Okay. But I'm 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 really because the thing is in Aaron's run, Mephisto has also appeared to be the architect. The one thing I will say for Aaron's run, so I do want to throw some compliments out here. Mm-hmm. He has been building this story 
of all these different anti-Avengers forces that unto themselves are pretty overwhelming. So we have Dracula's people. We have the Winter Guard or the, the Iron Guard. I'm not yes. sure what they're called now. Yeah, yeah. The Red Guard. Mm-hmm. We have uh, the um, the Squadron Su- Supreme, Namor's forces, Namor, yeah. all the and and Mephisto is definitely the common element to all that. Yeah, but but it, but so I um I almost want to ask what makes you think Mephisto is not the big bad? Oh. I've only kind of been paying attention to to it honestly, but oh look no, I mean nothing that really glared. At, I just thought it was an interesting comment that Conchu made that mm-hmm. you know, and also just because it seems so really easy to to do him in, you know, Mephisto. Uh, so it yeah. just seemed that like okay, so he's out of the way. He's like he's not the big bad boss. He's like a mini boss or something. I know he's Mephisto. I know he is the, sure, the yeah. devil, but it seemed like there was something behind that. So I, that was all I thought. So one of the things I thought that was interesting here was trying to figure out okay, well, who's Conchie going to go up against? And uh, I know well towards the end we see Starbrand, but at the same by the same token we know Conchie is still trying to get the Phoenix Force and Starbrand, all the big ones. So he hasn't got them yeah, yeah. yet. So uh, I don't know. It doesn't make sense that Starbrand would be the this big foe that Conchu wants, but I don't know. From my knowledge, now I'm sure real Starbrand fans, should they exist, <laughs> yes. uh, will probably have a, a stronger sense. I've always got the sense that this is more of a kind of sort of inchoate force. It's like a potential atomic bomb, mm-hmm. and not so much that there's been this sort of will behind it mm-hmm. that it would make sense as a kind of like big sort of i don't know antagonist okay. especially that has the kind of like machinations we're getting in the story mm-hmm. but the other thing aaron doesn't really care about he doesn't care about your continuity he's gonna do his <laughs> own thing so for all we know the star brand is now like uh some from a parallel dimension that created the marvel universe or something like that yeah no i mean true i mean speaking of continuity i want to just jump into one of the points i had here on characterizations you spoke that you uh, read Serpent War. Uh, had mm-hmm. you read the annual as well? The Acts of Evil, the Moon Knight annual against Kang? Did you the think? Kang, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. That was yeah, really I mean, cool. It, yeah. it makes sense, too, because they both have Egyptian iconography. Mm, that, that's, yeah. I mean, more it, Moon Knight because it's so principal to the character. But yeah, yeah it, it was like, it's about time these two meet, at least. Yeah, yeah. that was great. And, and there's no problems with Moon Knight going against, you know, Moon Knight will go against Galactus if he could, I reckon. Um, yes. <laughs> that's one of the beauties. <laughs> But Count Nefaria. Yeah, 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 exactly. I know what the hell was he thinking, but you know, mm-hmm. go for it. Uh, but the continuity issues here, I had. Okay, so at the beginning of this issue, again, um, weeks ago, Minot breaks into the temple, and I believe he references the Lemire run here because he goes, um, you know, I finally got you out of my brain, and Lemire did that beautifully. It was almost a very cathartic thing at the end of the Lemire run of him disowning almost Konshu. Uh, he does that at the beginning of issue 34. But talking about the annual and the Serpent War as well, if you look at the relationship between Moon Knight and Conchu there, you know, there was actually a, a little bit more of a um, of an alliance there. Like, there's mm. not... Number one, Conchu is, is pretty much out in the open as being kind of a real deity there. So there was a lot of ambiguity before. But anyway, he and Moon Knight seem to work together in both the Serpent War trade and uh and in the annual uh in aaron's run that comes out he's he's kind of disowned him already so yeah, that there's... that kind of rubbed a bit wrong with me but you know we did talk about this whole continuity thing being up in the air for everything um so that was just something i picked you know it seemed to be i don't con- think you're wrong yeah at all. it seemed to be a, a little blip i mean it seemed to continue from the lemire run but then it seemed to have forgotten totally about the annual and the seven war Serpent War relationship. Well, I will. I will say in the Lemire run, there was a certain kind of tension there. Mm. It's not it's not a the intention and in, in sort of implies not total difference, right? Mm. Some sort of connection. Yep. So it's like you know, I, I think it's not as if Moon Knight generally hates Kanchu. I think he sort of hates what he's done to his life in a certain way. Yeah. But it's okay. it's like you Kanchu in the story generally isn't the antagonist totally. He's or, or at least you know he's not the thing that Mark's trying to destroy or defeat. He's not the evil or something like that. Yeah. I think. There's something similar going on here, which is that like, the, like the, so the scenes like where Kanchu picks up Mjolnir, mm-hmm. and it's like, no, I'm gonna do it. They they at least seem to be vaguely on the same side in yeah. this in this conflict, right? So uh, you know, but he you know Mark then gets in our in his the Hell Charger, 
and you can see the streak of independence. Yeah. So yeah, it seems like they're they don't he doesn't trust Concho entirely, but he's still not totally uh, uh, warring against him or something like that. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, then, okay, how did you take it as well? Because that was, again, another one of my things about the theme. It seemed that Moon Knight, okay, so he betrayed, massive thing, betrayed all the Avengers, uh, stole mm-hmm. the powers, um, all under the, under the you know, worship of, of Khonshu. But then he's like, I'm not totally blind to his faith, I'm keeping it to myself. So is he just going totally lone wolf, do you reckon? Or is he, what, I, I, I was a little confused with what Moon Knight is, is what his plan is does he want to disrupt Conchu from actually saving the world or does he um does he not trust Conchu and thinks that he better do it himself to save the world in which case why the hell did he give Conchu all that power to begin with it's a pretty risky move to do um very much yeah 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 it's hard to say i mean like so we don't that's there are critical pieces in this story that haven't been given to us assuming we get them and i think that's the other thing about aaron there are times when like the really interesting stories and concepts he doesn't care to go back so much to like work out those logical details Mm. great example was how how it was like nick fury saying gore was right and made thor unworthy just sort of always he's just kind of never but anyway okay so uh, i i yeah i i think it does make sense uh you know i saw i heard on your show some voice sort of mentioning the idea how weird it would be why didn't moon knight just get all those the avengers together to help mm. you'd have all the powers and things like that but that as bad a decision as it might be sounds like mark to me yeah. which is like i you know I, i'm not really fully of an avenger they think i'm crazy anyway only i can really see what's going on yeah um but yeah, I think what you said was correct. I think, or at least that was how I took it. Very lone wolf kind of thing here, like doing his own thing, okay. not necessarily completely trusting Conchu. But I, I think he thinks that Conchu's better than whatever evil they're actually opposing. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, yeah, that is a good point. Actually, no, you're right. The more I think about it, as well, it is, it is pretty much Mark, isn't it? Um, so that would make sense. Um, Okay, Ray, Ray's appeased on that point. I'm happy with, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, are there any other points that you want to raise uh, in particular, Jared, for this run? Yeah, th- th- this one thing that bothers me about what Aaron's done to the, 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 uh, to the mythos, and I say done, I actually think this is going to be a very non-influential story. Yeah, me too. And, and when, people, when people think about continuity, they always get upset about somebody not recognizing what happened in the past, the writer not doing that. Sans the reason it's the most like sort of logically forthright thing. Mm -hmm. But I think the bigger issue is when we get this, which is a writer writes a thing that they should recognize will have no effect on continuity. Mm -hmm. When I say that, if I write a story where um, the thing punches out uh, Galactus, Mm -hmm. I can do that. Maybe, maybe the editor sees the value. It's entertaining and stuff like that. No, but no one is then going to later on be like, the thing is now strong enough to punch out Galactus. They're going to be like, this is an outlier. It doesn't matter. Yeah. This is the least interesting Moon Knight I think anyone's written in a good 10 years. And the reason I mention that, interesting in this way, uh, is that there are so many deities running around the Marvel Universe and comics generally. Just straight up deities that have powers, infuse powers, walk amongst us. It's it's not that it's boring. It's just there's nothing significant about that at an individual level. Mark was one of the first sort of characters who walked around with this sort of like ambiguity. And but let's say the story works the other way. Conch is real, but he's in the distance. He's mm. he's more like the Vishanti or something like that. Yeah, uh, that's pretty standalone or at least in the minority. So to try to get rid of that. In the face of telling what I take to be, I mean, Kanchu here could be any number of deities. This could be Odin, Zeus, it could be anything like mm. that, Wait, except they're onks. So, again, I think this is a matter of Jason Aaron not really appreciating what was really interesting. So, for instance, I'll tell you this I think if this, if Aaron's uh, Moon Knight had been around in uh, 2014 or whatever mm-hmm. instead of what Warren Ellis did I don't think I would have bothered I mean yeah. I might have been like oh that's a cool story but it's 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 just not captivating yeah I, I think the biggest thing going for it really is just how far it has gone from the the, the typical the I guess the the staple understanding of what we believe 
you know, a lot of people believe Moon Knight is, which is essentially a street level character, and it's really leaned heavily on the Egyptian mythology and, and the deity thing. Uh, really interesting point about the deities as well, there, Jared, because um, I really find them interesting in the Marvel universe as well. And there's a lot of room for all the sorts of deities uh, as well. Um, I'm a big <laughs> listeners will know I'm a big Hercules fan. Um, there was a great Greg Pak run. Uh, where Hercules and Thor as well, I think they go fight one of the Skrull gods and stuff, but they bring all these yeah. deities, the Japanese deity as well. Um, there were Aztecs, uh, and they all kind of had a had a bit of a, a rough and tumble. Um, I, so I I was actually looking forward to, to Conchu taking a step forward and maybe being established as as a as a as like a decent maybe a, a regular deity that you see uh, in more I, I, of the cosmic I, bigger sense as well. Even even if we saw him more, and even if yeah. there was like we we subtracted some of the ambiguity about his reality, I, I that I, I'm a little bit more comfortable with. It was more his activity that I thought was interesting, mm. like that he's sort of like he main. There's nothing mysterious about Thor. I'm sorry, there's not. I love the character, <laughs> yeah, so much. But there's he he is this very simple, <clears throat> sort of like um, straightforward. That's that's sort of his nature. I also think there's something fascinating about the idea of Mark's experience with the divine creates lunacy. It mm. creates crazy. There's a long-standing spiritual tradition. I mean, from I mean, all throughout history, especially you see it in the ancient Greeks a lot. This idea that you know, like the the sort of like bacchanalian, like losing of mm. sort of conscious rationality to see the truth. Yeah, and the fact that he Mark's crazier. By virtue of having uh, 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 crazier, but it, he's more in touch with reality in this other way, and it's all wrapped up in Kanchu is really cool. And we yeah. to have that in superhero comics, fantastic to get, see Aaron sort of go back to this more like you know Sunday school Moon Knight, Sunday school Kanchu. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's funny you say that as well. That is a really cool take on it, and <clears throat> it is does it does create a lot of interest for for Moon Knight. I wonder then, um, and I'm using a bit of Ma Max Bemis continuity as well. So in, mm. in issue 189 of the Max Bemis run, um, we see that Moon Knight is pretty much a legacy character. Like the, throughout the ages, we have different sorts of Moon Knights. Yeah. Um, that caused actually a few ripples in the water with, with a lot of Moon Knight fans because because there was something special about maybe Mark Spector being the only one that was chosen by Conchu. But on the on the flip side, it's like, well... Throughout the whole entire moment that that Conchu exists, why would it be only that time that he calls for an Avatar of Vengeance? Um, <clears throat> so it makes sense that throughout the ages he's had. Ask Jesus, I guess. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, yeah, that's a uh, yeah, true. Uh, no, but I like actually. I'd never thought about. It. I like that that link with the lunacy that you're saying and and being touched by God, so to speak, um, has kind of created that. It... There's a profound humility to the idea that mm. the and I'm look I'm not a religious person I don't want people to, to get that I last thing I want you to think about me but <laughs> but the, but there's something so interesting about this idea of uh, that you know the human mind in, in directly confronting uh, infinity would be shattered mm. and that Mark is still that but uh, a, a hero in shambles moving in a good direction. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. It's like it's a standalone sort of thing. I don't think we've seen anything like that in superhero comics, and I very much hope that it gets preserved. You know. Well, I, I think so too. I, I I hope when we finally get a a title series for Moon Knight, which I'm sure is going to occur around the time of the TV show. Yeah. Let's yeah. hope it's in uh, it's in good hands. Um, and also, uh, exactly, just further with what you're saying, let's also remember that for me again, this is my head the way I justify it. These are the Avengers books, and and I don't say this in any way to to sw um, in any detrimental way towards the Avengers books because I love Avengers as well, but sure. these are like bigger than you know over the top adventures, um, really really broad strokes by by the writers. Not only Jason Aaron, but you know we're talking about Avengers. They're like top tier. They take on cosmic. They do, you know, they do everything. Um, so this is very much in keeping for me for an Avengers book. You know, it just uses Moon Knight yeah. in there, and it's. Um, so we see Moon Knight in that arena as opposed to him, um, you know, stalking the streets of Brooklyn or something. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Any any other final comments, uh, Jared? Um, I uh, understand that Jason Aaron is a better writer than me. 
So I just want to put that out there. And I, as a Moon Knight fan, I like seeing him kick the shit out of all these people too. So I just want you to know that I, I'm yeah. still. At, uh, there's a part of me that still does like this, even with these criticisms. So I'll oh say yeah, that. yeah, me too as well. There's a little bit of cheeky fun of saying Moon Knight beat Iron Fist just with the fist of Conchu over and over and over again. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. And the, and nobody's really talked about the Doctor Strange thing that much, but because like it he, just got glossed I mean, over because it was exactly. like over in two panels. <laughs> like... uh, he's, he's, he's got that onk. I mean, anybody <sighs> with the onk can do it. But still, okay, whatever. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, let's. Uh, I'm just going to have one final trawl through my. No, I think uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah, pretty much covered it all. How about we go to a moon rating then, Jared? Um, so I'll, I'll let you go first. Uh, you can probably see in my prompt sheet my own rating. Now, you've got the choice of going for the vanilla, which is uh, equated to a, a phase of the moon, or you can get Connor Shoe's rating system <clears throat> a little bit more... a little bit more, uh, how shall I say, irreverent. Well, I... You know, I'm uh, funny, I think, and uh, so I'm going to go with the with the Connor shoe when I like it. I think it was, you know, um, yeah. Okay, so I, I'm just going to say it's. I give it a DreamWorks logo moon. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, maybe I don't know if that sounds. Wait, uh, yeah, no, that's for sure. that's worse, right? I want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, no, no, that's that, that's ten is the best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, we don't want. So yeah, I just. Oh yeah, I I just I was gonna say I I think by any criteria that I have to to rate a story in a comic, this actually has just got to be kind of low, mm-hmm. despite cool flashy moments and and the art being really good. Yeah, I gotta I gotta go low. Yeah. I gotta okay, go. no, no, there you go. Uh, so Looney's that we got a three out of ten, <clears throat> a DreamWorks logo moon. Um, I'll go for. Uh, I was about to say, I usually consider myself a, a, a harsh critic as well, but uh, uh, six and a half for me is yeah. is low. The six and a half, the the enjoyment is the just the fun, the fun factor of this. Um, you know, uh, I do, you know, w- what we were discussing everywhere uh, of all the things. Uh, I do am a little kind of irked at at him being depicted the way he's being depicted in the Aaron Run. Um, I do have my my tusk or my my trunk, um, mm. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I really enjoy, enjoy this understanding that it is within the Avengers title. So it's just a lot of it's a real it's a real fun ride for me. Um, but there are some of the downfalls, shortcomings, which we mentioned mainly for this issue with the pacing. I found a problem, mm. um, and just lost opportunity to actually really create, really mould out uh, the world that Aaron wants to make um, Conchu make if that makes sense um, yeah yeah so <clears throat> I, I don't know i can understand there might be stuff with editorial and 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 timing and stuff but um yeah i was hoping that would take the foot off a bit and just really absorb this whole scenario so six oh, wait, or, yeah, six am i am i gonna be like persona non grata <laughs> in the moon knight community now no, that no. I rated it so low. Oh, no, 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 not at all. No, we've <laughs> got... Like, no. I, it's not a community I want to piss off, is what I'm saying. No. I'm really worried somebody's going to throw, like, a, a moon-shaped boomerang at me or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No, no, we're very... um, Absolutely. Uh, honest honest reviews and honest opinions are the best, you know. The last thing I want you to do is say, oh, no, this was a, you know, 8 out of 10, because... I feel that you probably think that it should be, you know. So that that's great. Uh, no, no, not at all. There are many loonies I know that that do like this. Some that don't really like this. So we're we're all in the mix. It's all good. Um, yeah. So there you go, loonies. That's uh, uh, six and a half out of ten. I give it and a three out of ten. <clears throat> Sorry, part of my I've been. Uh, been shouting a lot today, <laughs> so uh, my voice is a bit scratchy. It's not. It's not Corona. Don't worry. Uh, anyway, uh, there you go, Loonies. Check it out. Uh, Avengers thirty four. Uh, it's worth checking out for a lot of fun. Uh, the art is. I find the art's really fun as well. Uh, um, so Javier Garon does does really good work on it. Um, to our spectacle before we wrap things up, Jared. Uh, so you mentioned you are, of course, Jared's one of the co-hosts of the Phantom Zone podcast. Mm-hmm. Where can listeners contact you to throw those boomerangs at you? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm an idiot because I was supposed to have this information, <laughs> and now my co-hosts are going to kill me. 
Um, well, you can go to the Phantom, uh, the Phantom Zone Podcast dot com. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to tell you that because that's going to get you the links to everything. Yes. So you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter. We have a Discord or an Instagram. But go to the Phantom Zone Podcast dot com, and you can you'll be able to find all of our social media stuff. Um, and listen to us, please. We're very good. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they are. I mean, I, I can I can be testament to that as well. I, I did check out your webpage, of course, as well. I was lurking there and coveting, coveting the uh, the web webpage. It's a very good webpage, actually. Um, so working uh, on the blog, it's become a, a whole yeah, mission. That. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's very, it's actually really fun to get. It's a great editing tool too to go back and listen to like the episode the early episodes. Mm. There's something about going from A to B. And like how far we've come and what I like that we've done. Anyway, that's it. Just yeah. really good stuff. Check it out. Check that's it cool. out. Check it out. It, it's it's aesthetically very pleasing. The website as well. I I really do dig it. So um, go check them out. Hurl your hurl your comments towards Jared. <laughs> I was going to say Jared, a, a massive thank you. Um, yeah. Actually, actually, hey, hold the phone, Ray. Oh my God, we've still got just a few <laughs> things to go. Uh, Jared, I might want to uh, just if you could lend your dulcet tones again. Just for uh, maybe one of these uh, these written bits of feedback, we got a couple of bits of feedback for the issue. Uh, one from Twitter, uh, Jared. Do you want to take um, do, do you want to take that one? Um, this is from the one from the amazing Yan mm-hmm. at John Yancheck one. Um, they say great issue setting up an epic story. Uh, I get the feeling this is going to be a definitive Moon Knight story by the time it's done! Exclamation point. Uh, good to see Moon Knight get exposure in a major Marvel book. So we disagree, but that's right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thank you, John, as well. Uh, I know, I know, John. Just more recently, uh, he's a massive follower of. I'm going to give a shout out of Happiness in Darkness, an Italian podcast um, covering comic book movies. Really cool. But thank you, John. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's good to see Moon Knight in a in a um, a mainstream book as well. It's good to see. Hey, it's good to see Moon Knight in any book at, the, at this stage. So um, I'm glad that we have something to to chat about. Uh, in our Facebook page, we have, of course, no stranger to the show, the power the of power Chad. 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 Uh, Chad Jernigan, and he says, "Let me just uh, wet the whistle here. I'm pumped to see that Mark retains the Hell Charger and his willpower post Hammerdown." Uh, that was a visceral scene, and the devil's execution was methodical. Lots of flash, but I have a lot of questions. T'Challa already stated he can't give up his power, so why the threats? Where is Mark's scar? Good point. Mark's family? Frenchy? Where is this all heading? Beautiful work, and the action was very compelling. There's a lot of implications and development in this issue, and I'm here for it. I give this a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, you know I'll be watching the next issue's release at that midnight. Well, thank you, Chad. Uh, a very another a very uh, a positive uh, response to issue thirty four as well. Um, yeah, interesting. Actually, if I can just say, Chad, I, I found that I found your comments interesting as well because um, I thought I thought Chad was a little hesitant, uh, but he he must be on board now from issue thirty four. But uh, a huge thank you to Chad for that. Uh, one final thing as well, Jerry. Just before we wrap up, we have a voicemail from the Drop King, Phil Perich. From capes and lunatics, so I'm gonna throw it to Phil now, to uh, to yeah, to hear his thoughts. Hello, fellow loonies, it's Phil again from the Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. Get those plugs in there. Uh, but yes, we got part two of the Age of Conchu. As a Moon Knight fan, I'm excited. I'm sure you all are. Uh, Avengers 34. I'm glad that it, this thing opens up with like a flashback kind of because we see you know mark specter's not like the villain or at least he's not trying to be uh basically him and conchu are trying to save everything from uh, mephisto all roads point back to mephisto uh i'm a big spider-man fan and i i hate i don't use that word a lot i hate what they did with Spider-Man's marriage, they need to bring that marriage back, which if you're reading Amazing Spider-Man, things are happening. It could be turned around, but yeah, Mephisto. Uh, the thing that's... Str- well, my, one of my co-hosts, Char- Charlie, and I were just talking about this on uh, one of our many shows. Uh, does anyone else think it's weird that like you're basically locking the personification of evil in a room it's it's like this guy should be so you know 
existing on on multiple levels of reality, and it's just, oh hey, we locked him in a penthouse in Las Vegas, and they're feeding him, which I guess what is it? He's eating a steak, so I guess he's eating the soul of the cow. And I guess they're doing that to keep him alive because, yeah, I think they even call it, Kanchi even calls that out here. Like, if you kill Mephisto, he's just going to come back in a different form. Uh, and come on, Mark, you know this isn't a good idea. Even though you're rocking some magical powers now, you're going to go toe-to-toe with Mephisto. Although I do like the the whole uh, Thor, you know, the whole Mjolnir through uh, Mephisto's chest with the angst. That's pretty cool. Uh... But yeah, I like what they're doing. I mean, the Avengers book could use more Avengers. Um, but I do like whether we're getting Moon Knight. I mean, we need an ongoing series. I keep saying that. But I guess maybe closer to the TV show whenever that's coming. Uh, and, the, and this whole thing with Black Panther. I like Black Panther. And I mean, you people know I love the Batman. But... I don't know, it just seems like they're really turning into that Batman skid with Black Panther where it's like, oh, Black Panther can think his way out of anything or create a, a solution to anything. Batman. I know, right? Your favorite character. Um, <coughs> but, I don't know, they kind of do that with, with Captain America too, but I mean, they really do it with Moon Knight. I mean, Moon Knight. We all, we all have Moon Knight on the brinks. We need more Moon Knight, but yes, uh, I think they're really doing it with Black Panther now, you know, the genius level, because they kind of downplayed that in the movie, but yeah, like, Black Panther's a pretty smart guy. Uh, but I don't know, it just seems, I mean, again, Mark Spe- Spector has uh, men- uh, mental issues, but it's just like, if he's really this good guy, why is he keeping Black Panther chained up and then beating on him? Uh, I know we call him a fool, but it's like, why wouldn't you maybe help? But wouldn't you ask the Avengers for help? I don't know. Mm, maybe things aren't as they appear to be. I know, hey! Come on, Brian, inner demons. Uh, what do you think of this uh, Moon Knight Ghost Rider mashup? Uh, and then we, the issue ends with Captain of Bad Life Decisions, uh, Iron Man, Tony Stark, uh, we got Captain Marvel, and the new Star Brand Baby. Which, if another big disappointment for me, if you uh, listen to my uh, one of my other many shows, The Quantum Zone, where we talk all things Quasar, I was hoping that this baby's mother was going to be Kayla from that series. And if you don't know who Kayla is, go check out uh, Quantum Zone on uh, the Capes of Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. Plug number two. But yeah, I mean... I don't know if Mephisto is manipulating things, or there's. It seems like very cosmic-y stuff. Maybe Conchu is staging this whole thing to manipulate Mark. Uh, I might be interested. I wonder too if they're going to start s- using this story as a way to separate Mark from Conchu because maybe the TV series is going to steer away from Conchu. Maybe uh, something to think about because that's my whole theory too. It's like. This whole House of X stuff with the X-Men, they're kind of holding the X-Men in a holding pattern. So, you know, when Disney decides how they're going to present the X-Men in the MCU, then the comic writers can just flip them over to whatever that is. But anyway, back to Moon Knight. Yeah, I think we're going to maybe we're going to separate or put some distance between Mark Spector and Conchu just because the show maybe, you know, we might get some statues of Conchu. Maybe we'll see a a vision in the first episode when he dies and comes back. But yeah, I really, I would bet that they're going to downplay the Conchu a little bit in the TV show, maybe for budget, if nothing else. Uh, but yeah, could Conchu be manipulating everyone? Could Mark have been working for an evil entity this whole time since, you know, the beginning of his career? 